Thank you. Thank you very much for the invitation. I, w I had also the chance to be here, I think, about two years ago. And indeed, I saw a couple of subjects that are sometimes to come back. So it's uh, interesting, and uh, uh, hopefully uh, my bonus is not paid on uh, how fast we move these subjects forward. Otherwise, uh, I might be in a bit of trouble. Um, I, I had a chance to be talking about something else, and I was listening carefully to what was said this morning, and I would like to thank you for your comment you made, uh, because I've heard actually a lot about scandals, problems, um, regulation, control, uh, issues. So if one would look at this, we say, what the hell is this? What kind of an industry is this? What kind of an environment is this? Uh, it seems that uh, most probably anybody would use one of these products as a chance to, a good chance to uh, have a very serious problem. And when I hear this, I was wondering, you know, it's just, I was trying to motivate myself for my speech and say, what do I do? I mean, do I, do I talk or do I run away from the room uh, because I'm totally depressed uh, about what medical technology is all about? So, obviously, I decided to stay uh, because I think that there are a couple of interesting messages that we need to bring forward. Uh, I would like to say that despite what you heard this morning, the few cases of problems... Uh, there are actually people using every day over 500,000 medical devices. Um, now, I, we don't hear about 500,000 cases of problems every day, frankly. Uh, we know that people are able to live their life today in a normal way while they were not able to do it before. We know we save people every day. We know we improve their quality of life. I'm not saying, and I don't want to say that, hey, we are a perfect industry, and you know what? Don't worry. We have our share of, of challenges, indeed. Uh, we do have our black sheeps. Yes, we do. And we hope that we would have even less of them. But at the end of the day, this industry is based on a vision to really change the life of people in the future. I was a bit worried about the sentence you presented at the end of your presentation. Because uh, I'm concerned when we see that, you know, is there a chance that as you escalate innovation, you escalate the risk and the problems? Uh, I would have a tendency to say maybe if you look at the facts, it's actually the reverse which is happening. I think that if you would look at how medicine was practiced 20 years ago and how it is practiced today with the various technology which are made available uh, we save much more lives than we do create problems. So I think it is time that we look at, uh, in particular, medical technologies with a bit of a different eye, as a bit of, a, of a, uh, an opportunity for all of us in the future. Uh, let me tell you one thing. You haven't seen one-tenth of what's in the pipeline in terms of technologies and how these technologies are going to transform the way medicine is practiced, the way we're being taken care of by our doctors in the future. There is so much to come. It's just absolutely amazing and, and actually really exciting. Now, hopefully, yes, indeed, we're going to do this in, a, in an environment which is well-structured in terms of, of, of clinical studies, in terms of how this is all approved, controlled, so that, you know, this is all obviously in the interest of one person. And that's what our industry is all about. It's the interest of one person. It's the patient. Okay? And indeed, when you see the black sheep sometime in an industry, I would tell you, the one that we have in our industry, the one thing they have in common is they don't really care about the patient. And that's generally when the problem starts to come. Okay? They do care a bit more about the money than they do care about the patients. Okay? So, so I, I, want, I want to make sure that we understand... The future is great. The future is bright. There are fantastic things coming through. Um, so let's not continuously dwell on, yes, indeed, there are problems. And these problems, yes, are helping us moving forward in terms of our environment and our regulation. But let's not continue to dwell on it. You know what? Yes, I am sick and tired to hear about PIP. Yes, I am sick and tired to hear about metal-on-metal -metal issues. 
which, by the way, was picked up thanks to the effectiveness of the system in the EU. So why don't we talk about something else? Why don't we talk about the future and how we can transform the future? Uh, I, I won't go through this. I won't say a few words about diabetes. We, we, we know, and, and patients suffering from diabetes, we know this is a major, major issue. Um, it has impacts all over the places in our, in our, uh, in our, in our lives. Uh, certainly it is, to a lot of extent, uh, indeed underestimated, or I don't know what it is, it is not taken the right way by, by neither national nor regional uh, authorities, despite being one of the most significant chronic conditions that we have to deal with, despite of the fact that how it affects healthcare systems, um, what is it that is not working here? Uh, what is it? I think that's, a, that's an interesting debate that we should have and we should continue to push forward. Now, the response in the future is what? Well, maybe there is some hope that we do have in our industry continuous innovation that can help bring this thing forward. Now, our industry is committed to one thing, is bring value, to deliver value, value for patients, absolutely, value for healthcare systems, and God knows they're in big need for this, society and economy. We can, in particular, bring significant better value in terms of diabetes management. I mean, we see with all the technology already existing that today the way you can manage diabetes is profoundly different than the way you were doing it 10 years ago. Okay. Now, if you push this to the extreme, one could start to project you know, what this could mean for, for the life, particularly of patients. The outcome we are for, indeed, I mean, all of these are very classical things that, that we are committed to do. Now, if you look at, again, in diabetes, we want safe and high-quality technology to, to allow what? Well, to allow patients to have an independent and active living. And I think today we can have this. We already have the technology for this. To reduce the progression, obviously, of the unfortunate secondary disease linked to diabetes, and at the end, to improve the health outcome. I mean, when you look at how patients can live today with some of the technology that we can provide, it is just absolutely amazing. A lot of, even patients with diabetes can go back and have a practically normal life. Now, if that's not a positive outcome, then what do you need? Okay? If you say, well, we need to get rid of diabetes, we know that's an extra step that we're not there yet, but we're working on. But at least we can significantly change their life. Healthcare systems. There's many things that we are we're looking at right now to try to see how can we improve these system, systems. Um, in diabetes, again, I think that the technologies that are available today and will be available in the future can significantly reduce the complication. And not only that, they can really take fully the situation of a patient suffering from diabetes. You know, from, from the prevention, from the diagnostics, to the management. Okay. That's, that's there. Okay. And that's going to come even more in the very close future. And you know what? On top of it, what's interesting, this can even be done in a cost-effective way in terms of management. Uh, in global, you know, the evaluation we're looking at right now is that if our healthcare system would use fully what's available in technologies, in medical technology today, we could most probably reduce cost of healthcare between 20 and 40 percent. And consequently, we could most probably have sustainable healthcare systems. Now, obviously, it's a bit of a theoretical condition, but this would mean that, you know, it's like, do you use fully your latest iPhone 6, or do you just use it to give phone calls? Which a lot of us essentially do phone calls and a little bit of agenda, and obviously a, a list of contact. Now, you know what? That machine can do much, 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 much more than this. So um, that's the whole issue with, with technology is, are we using it to its full extent? Most probably not. It's very unfortunate because we do have the solution with technologies. Now, the other thing is, 
uh, the value for healthcare system, as you know, the tendency right now, uh, and I think it's one that will continue to move in that, that way, is actually to bring more and more uh, the, the, the shift of inpatient towards outpatient. And there again, I think that the technology, medical technology, is a major partner in helping in that shift on how do you take patients out of hospitals and bring them more into their normal uh, life environment. Frankly, the interesting point is um, this is actually not to please people who are managing hospitals, which don't always, interestingly enough, see this as a great opportunity. But it's a, it's a contradictory issue that uh, can happen when you do develop technologies. Now, if you look specifically in terms of diabetes, I think that what we can bring forward in terms of technologies can really help prevent acute care, we talked about already the high level of self-management that we can bring uh, to patients and also then uh, use uh, the use of professional time, the exchange of data, you know, the whole famous issue of e-health, whatever that actually means, because we could spend also here a lot of time talking about this, uh, but it will definitely change the way patients are managed by physicians and the way patients are managing their conditions. And in there, we're only at the very beginning of what will come in the, in the future. Um, in terms of society and economy, as I mentioned to you, I think that with the technologies that are in the pipeline and what's coming up, uh, we, we have the possibility to uh, really change the condition of people and consequently the impact they have on their own economy. It's an interesting subject uh, because obviously... One of the objectives that, that we have is to bring people back into active life as quickly and as best as possible. Why? Because they are a major source of economic growth. And that's how we can, as an industry, okay, contribute to try to rebuild Europe as an economic force. You know, when you have patients that are used to stay, let's say, one, one month, two months, three months in the hospital, and have a three-month recovery time, and that now, because of technology, because of potential of the least invasive way you can treat a patient, they only stay in hospital one week, and they're basically able to recover in two weeks and basically able to be back at work in one month. Then you basically gain a significant amount of time of economic contribution from patients. That's um, how we can do this. We can also, obviously, reduce inequalities. Uh, and if we accept to use fully these technologies, we can definitely change the way we will be moving forward in healthcare, but also as a global economic contributor. It would be impossible for me to <coughs> be here and review all the technology which are on the pipeline of the various uh, of our industry. Uh, the only thing I can tell you, it's, it's, it's just from another world, what we have. I mean, yes, we could talk longly about what we, we've seen about these famous lenses that, that Google looked into and have no idea if they are good or bad. And it's not here for, for make that assessment. Uh, but that's, that's just incredible what they're looking into and thinking of uh, what could be making tomorrow the way you manage a condition like diabetes. Uh, now, obviously, it is critical that it's being done not just as an open, wild, wild west environment, and you do anything just because of the sake of technology. Obviously, you have to make sure that whatever is being done, developed, is, is, is transparent, it is safe for patients, because obviously we're not here to just have fun. We're here to provide true, strong, solid results, which got to be safe for patients, but also very efficacious as a, as a treatment. Um, for us uh, at, at MedTech Europe, what we've done recently is uh, obviously this all diabetes environment is a very critical one in, in our healthcare uh, panorama in, in Europe. Uh, we've, we've decided to create a very specific dedicated group, which actually is interesting because it brings people in the industry, both from, from the diagnostic side but also from the device side, together uh, with a specific and only interest. Being, being diabetes. 
uh, th this was recently created. Uh, the objective is definitely to look at and be very patient-centered in terms of diabetes management. Um, the objective is also to raise as much as we can the, the, the issue of diabetes on the agenda of the, at the EU, but also the national level, and to provide for you a very well-identified group of people you can talk to and work with in, in the objective of moving forward moving forward with technologies that can definitely make the difference for people tomorrow. Thank you very much. Thank you. <coughs> Thank you again. Are there any comments? <laughs> you, because... <laughs> well, excellent answers on my question in the beginning. Marvelous, marvelous. Uh, I had the privilege uh, uh, last year or the year before to talk one hour, full one hour, with the founder of Medtronic, is Earl Bakken. Earl Bakken. And wonderful, he, inspiring he is. Just what you are talking, having diabetes in a wheelchair, nothing anymore to do. So that's my, yeah, to, to say how wonderful it is. And my, yeah, I'm always the second question to uh, Andrew. Uh, are you already thinking about the stem cell factory? Already now with a big scandal, but also with a marvelous uh, 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 production of stem cells in the oncology field. As to you, but maybe also to Andrew, maybe next year an item. Okay, <laughs> Uh, with all due respect, I, would, I cannot answer that question because I don't know. I, I think for next year, there's an interest in looking more into detail at continuous glucose monitoring. But that is an important topic. Yeah. The problem with much of this work is it's not randomized control trials, it's anecdote which leads to centers setting up in a number of countries. You know, we offer the cure for diabetes if you go somewhere in the Caribbean, or, for example, uh, with no evidence whatsoever. So I think there's excitement but dangers. No? Yes. Okay, uh, and, and your point is absolutely true. I mean, I think that um, one of the key challenges is it's actually an interesting situation, which is not only specific to our industry, it's any industry which is very much forward looking, forward moving with innovation. Uh, has that an impact of um, how do you get that accepted in the mentality of people. And for us, very clearly, um, as I can just say, innovation in medical devices actually tr is, is trouble for a lot of people because we are forcing changes. We're forcing significant changes in the way medicine is practiced, in the way... Uh, hospitals are managed, uh, and that aspect will take time. That aspect will take time. There is no way around. Uh, I've seen situations where, you know, because of the technology we have, we can bring people now. I was recently in a company where for a knee surgery, you come in in the morning, you leave in the afternoon with a new knee. Now, uh, most probably before, that would have taken a couple of days, if not a couple of weeks, okay, in a hospital. So actually, we're creating empty beds. Now, as you know, we, we create empty beds. Uh, we actually have a bit of enemies out there, which are the people managing hospitals, because then they have to say, you know, where is my budget? Because now I don't need the budget anymore because we're not staying. So I think it's going to take time. I think it's our responsibility as an industry to be able to try to work this out to not only focus on our technologies as such and demonstrate how great, how innovative this is, but to also take the time to invest in what I would call the economic outcome of our technologies and try to really 
quantify, seriously quantify what it means in terms of savings. Most of us develop technologies without putting enough into that bit, which is the famous health economic part. So if you come to me and you say, look, I have a new technology. This is how, this is the type of saving this will bring to you. And this is how you're going to be using these savings. Then people are going to start to listen. If we only bring the technology, people are going to just say, you, you're a problem. You actually end up to be a problem to me when you should be a solution. Uh, it's going to take time. Frankly, I have, we have to say, and that's what I'm saying, if today all the technology which is out there, and I'm not talking about tomorrow, which is out there, would be used to its full extent, we would, the cost of healthcare would be reduced by a very, very significant amount. Unfortunately, mentalities are not ready, structures are not ready, and it's going to take time to get in place. But we have to play a bit of a different role, which is also to help these people managing healthcare, helping them understand where they're going to make the economy and how they can use this differently. Uh, which actually is pushing us outside our basic responsibility of simply product development and so on. But it's a, how can we demonstrate our value? Okay, well, thank you very much. That seems an excellent point now to stop and uh, break.